What's up YouTube? I have four GoPros here. This is a Hero 10, 11, and 12 and a 12. I'm going to test out the new time code feature, which isn't totally new. Um, it exists on the Hero 10 and 11 if you use the GoPro Labs firmware. But what I'm going to do here is show how it works on the Hero 12s, and I guess how it works on the 10 and 11. And then we're going to see if it's really as exact and precise as they claim. Um, current state on the 10 and 11 that I have, because they're different cameras, I think that's why they're not exactly in sync like I would expect. So I'm hoping with the 12s that we're closer to that point. And first off, all four of these cameras have been charging overnight. And what was interesting is that all of them feel cool to the touch except this one. And when I do a temperature scan on it, this one's reading 99, 97, versus these other ones are 73, 74, 72. I'm kind of curious if this one will even turn on. I haven't tried yet. So anyway, let me get both of these, all four of these on. What I'm gonna do is just take various clips over the next hour or two, um, and then I'll line them up and post in Premiere and show how that's done. No, so this is a brand new Hero 12. I've maybe used it for like a couple minutes testing things out, already frozen. And actually, if this one has the dot inside of it that I put with a Sharpie, this one does not. So this is not the one that, one of my GoPro 12s was actually frozen right out of the box. Let me see if it was this one. This one, I put a little dot in there in Sharpie. So now at this point, both of my Hero 12s have frozen while charging. And the way to get around that is pull the battery, stick it back in and hope that the camera's actually charged because it was plugged in all night. We're at 98%. All right, um, when you um, get these all synced up by time, you gotta do it via a GoPro Time Sync website. I'll put a link in the description and it shows a QR code on the screen and shows the time code. Uh, what you wanna pay attention to is the NDF 30 row here, that time, so that's for 30 frames a second, which is what I'm shooting in here. And before you show the QR code, you gotta make sure the screens on all four cameras are on. And all you do is flash it. So the big difference here is that the Hero 12s do it right out of the box versus the 10 and 11 you have to uh, put on the GoPro Labs firmware. So what I'm gonna do is start recording on each camera here. And let me see if I can do it by showing the QR code and if all four cameras see it, that'd be a very precise way to see how in sync or out of sync they are. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do a noise And between the noise and talking, we'll be able to hear if there's like an echo or delay. So I'm gonna stop each one here. Uh, come back um, once I have about an hour's worth of clips every 10, 15 minutes. And I'll show you how to align it in Premiere and go from there. And we'll see how accurate it is. All right, we're about 12 or 13 minutes in now. Let me turn the screens back on. Let's see, battery at 92, 95, 90. 291, so they're all pretty similar here, just chilling like this. I'm gonna start another clip. And I forgot to mention, throughout this process, I'm not turning any of the cameras off. They're all set on 30 minutes of standby before they shut off, and I'm not gonna go that long between clips. So um, now that they're both recording, I can flat flash the QR code again, and they won't like reset their times, but I'm gonna do it just to be able to compare in post here. And I'll do some sounds. Oh, and at the end of this, um, I'm going to take one of the GoPro Hero 12s and put it in a refrigerator for a while because part of time code accuracy um, is that a lot of internal clocks, I guess, somehow um, change their accuracy depending on the temperature. So what I'm assuming is that these two are gonna be pretty accurate, but what I wanna do is throw a curveball in here and change the temperature on one of them to see if that makes it more or less off. Um, 
when I line them up in post. So anyway, um, let me end this clip. And I'm gonna do a few more rounds of this every 10, 15 minutes, and then we'll go ahead and do the refrigerator test. All right, we're another 15 minutes in. Batteries at 85, 89, 83, 81. And I don't know if I said exactly what it was before, but it's a temperature controlled crystal oscillator that the expensive time um, sync devices like the Tentacle Sync or is, along with more expensive cameras. Um, it's pretty expensive to put those uh, into cameras, especially as a feature that's probably not used by very many people. So I have a feeling they didn't do that here. All right, I'm another 15 minutes in. Start a clip. All right, I'm at an hour now or about an hour. Let's see, battery life 75, 78, 67, 64. Let me start a clip. Show the QR code. Make a noise. And I'm gonna stop these. And at this point, I will take this Hero 12, put it in the fridge for 15, 20 minutes, and we'll see if that changes the accuracy. My understanding is that if the cameras are turned off in between clips, that the QR code sync is no longer valid. It's just gonna fall back onto the date and time of the GoPro. So maybe they have some technology where um, temperature won't factor in um, as long as you don't turn the camera off. So let's give it a try. Here's 15 minutes later and this GoPro here, spent some time in the fridge. Although, warmed up pretty quick. And I'm gonna put this one back in the fridge for 15 more minutes. Maybe I'll do the freezer this time. Uh, we'll do 15 minutes in the freezer and I'll come back for one last check. All right, here's 15 minutes in the freezer on this one here. You can see uh, 40 degrees versus 93 versus 105 versus 108. Let's get a clip going. And I don't know if the QR code is gonna work where it's fogging up so quick. So we'll probably just have to go by sound on this one. Maybe I got it in time there. All right, I'm gonna let, here, let's do batteries real quick. So 60%, 64, 46, 41. What I'm gonna do now is like let another 15 minutes go by um, and we'll do one final clip and hopefully that'll be back up to the right temperature to see if that changes it. All right, we're another 15 minutes in since this has been taken out of the freezer. Let's do battery check first. 54, 58, 37, and 30. And let's get a clip going, a final clip. Show the QR code. And make a noise. All right. Um, I'm gonna stop recording now. I'm gonna take the SD cards out, copy everything off, and show you how to line everything in Premiere, and we'll see how accurate the time code is between these cameras. Okay, I'm here in Premiere. It's a pretty, simp uh, pretty basic install. I haven't done much to it. What you'll wanna do first is make a bin for each camera. So I'm gonna do a Hero 12 1, Hero 12 2, Hero 11, and the Hero 10. And what you want to do is click on each bin, go to your media browser, and import the files, and see you put them in bin 11. So we'll do Hero 12 1, Do 
Hero 12 2. This is the one that went in the freezer. And Hero 10. All right, so before you do the multicam alignment, when you right click and go to uh, create multi-camera source sequence, you need to label each camera, each file for the cameras. And to do that, you'll open up a folder per camera, highlight all the files, and you want to go to Windows and Metadata, make sure that window's turned on. And by default, you won't have camera labels and options, so you have to click the little hamburger thing here and go to Metadata Display, search for Camera Label, make sure that's turned on, and uh, now when you select the files, whoops, and search for camera label, we can give them a label, uh, this is the Hero 11 folder of 11. I'll go ahead and do the same thing for Hero 12 1. Let's see. Hero 12 2. And then. What are you doing? I've got a record button in the way for my screen recorder. I'm just opening up in 12, 10, and doing it this way. It's a good idea to check some of your folders, click some of the files, make sure the camera label actually carried over. I have had them not saved before, so. All right, and then what you want to do is select your camera folders, right click, go to create multi-camera source sequence, and in here we want to do it by time code and we want to create a single multicam source sequence and we want to do it by camera label. And then pre-defaulted on a new install will be move source clips to process clips bin. I always uncheck that. It's just annoying to have one bin with all of them versus um, separate folders. And then hit OK and you should get a new sequence, I guess. When you right click it, you can open it in your timeline and we can see here We've got all kinds of little clips on here with gaps in between for when no camera was recording. And let's zoom in on the first one. I've got this bar in the way though, I don't know how to get rid of it. I'm using a different screen recorder because apparently on Windows 10 that this computer is running, you can't record in the snipping tool, but on Windows 11 you can. All right, right off the bat, Let's fix the audio first. Usually you have to right click in this area on each one, go to track output and make sure it's on one, two. Usually one of them will not be on it. But in this case, everything is good. Yep. All right, so we can see right off from the waveform that at least one of the cameras is off. And in this case, it's the Hero 10 that seems to be pretty far off from the others. I'm gonna, I guess there's no point in, in playing this as is, well, here we go. And between the and noise and... Alright, so if I mute that Hero 10... Do a noise. And between the noise and talking... Maybe. So they're actually pretty good. So before I got the Hero 12s, I had a Hero 10 and a Hero 11. And the issue with that is that, for some reason, they never a lot. And, and, noise. and between the and noise and talking, they're just way off from each other. So this is kind of cool. So if you have a Hero 11 and want to get another camera, um, I guess it doesn't matter that it's the same camera because it looks like they're staying in sync so far. But let's do some more testing before we call that final. Um, let me move farther down. I should just zoom out. All right, so that's test one. Here is test two. We can see already that Hero 10 is way ahead of these other ones, but let's zoom in here. Okay, so the Hero, I wanna say this must be the Hero 11. Yeah, I'm looking over here at the camera label to know which clip I'm selecting. 
um, the Hero 11 is starting to get off from the Hero 12s, but the Hero 12s look like they are pretty spot on. Let me mute the Hero 10 and 11. Oh, and at the end of this, really close, like one frame maybe. Actually, maybe we can tell. Uh, I'll, I'll do that farther on. We'll um, actually look at the time code I usually displayed in each of the clips. All right, here's another 15 minutes later. See, the Hero 10 is off, but the Hero 11 is off, and the Hero 12s are both perfectly in sync, it looks like. Let's go a little farther down. This is about 45 minutes in. Oops. You can see, let me mute the 11. That was weird. It's uh, This particular sample doesn't look like I did any. Smacks. Let me go to the next one. All right, so this is about an hour in, and you can see the Hero 12s are still spot on. The Hero 11 has gotten farther ahead, and the Hero 10 is way off as usual. I'm curious of when we get into the freezer ones here, which I think might be. Yeah, okay, so this is after being refrigerated. Let me just double check this. This is here a 12-1, 12-2. Let me make sure, I'll know for sure if I see fog on this next one. Yeah, okay. So refrigerator. Here's 15 minutes in the refrigerator. Let's look at the Hero 12. This line and this line, they are very close. All right, let me show the QR code. Make a sound. That's awesome. So as long as you keep the cameras on, it looks like maybe temperature doesn't factor in too much. Let's go to 15 minutes in the freezer. I just have to go by sound on this one. A little bit farther off. Maybe... Let me scale it and move it. I think of the best way to do this. Definitely not a professional at Premiere here, but. All right, so 9.34.18.21, So they're, they're a frame. Although I shouldn't be looking at the 24, I should be looking at the 30. So 9.34.18.26, 9.34.18.25, they are within a frame of each other still. And then the final, after letting it cool down. Noise. All right. Um, so the Hero 11 looks like it's been pretty close all along. I would be kind of curious on the uh, Hero 25, let's say the Hero 10, if they're consistently just off by a little and you can shift them. So let's, whoops, that is this one. Let me try shifting them. So I can hold Alt and then do left and right. Let me zoom in a little more. All right, so I've aligned the Hero 10 to the Hero 12s. 
Let me scroll back to the very beginning of the timeline and see if they're in sync there as well. Ah, it's a little ahead. Yeah, it's definitely ahead. Let me uh, go towards the middle here. And the Hero 10 is way off from the 12. So um, the Hero 10 time clock just doesn't seem anywhere near as accurate as the 11 and especially as the 12. So anyway, I think that's um, promising here for the Hero 12. If you um, want to do multi-camera sync, it looks like now you can do it and have everything within one frame and not have to worry about temperature changes or buying expensive tentacle sinks um, or other time code devices. And um, yeah, that's awesome. I'm gonna use this for fishing. Uh, I usually have one camera facing me and a camera behind me. I'm waiting for my Max Lens Mod 2 to come because I'm hoping that can be the camera behind me and shows a more wide angle of when I catch a fish. And yeah, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.